The story takes place in the ancient city of Ithuria when the two palace guards, Nikolaus and Hans, have just finished their patrol. Nikolaus suggests the two go to a nearby pub to celebrate their payday. The pub Nikolaus wants to introduce to Hans is Izakaya Nabu, owned by a man named Nabuzaki, but people usually call him Teshu, which refers to the owner. The two guards step inside, and for the first time in his life, Hans has seen a Japanese-style pub. As usual, Nikolaus asks the waitress, Shinobu, to bring him two draft beers. Hans tries the beer and finishes the big glass in an instant. This is indeed the first time he's drunk such a fresh kind of beer, so he immediately asks for another. He turns to Nikolaus, noticing and surprised that his friend is eating beans without removing the shells. Nikolaus explains that this dish is boiled edamame with salt, a classic beer snack at this pub, and he should eat them whole in order to feel all the rich flavors. This snack is so delicious that Hans keeps taking it one by one with the beer until they run out of it. At this point, Hans realizes that if the beans hadn't run out, he'd have eaten them until his stomach exploded. Out of all the first things, he's impressed by the nice waitress and the super chef at the pub. Shinobu then serves them with a bowl of Nabu's specialty odin, which is steamed veggies and egg soup. Hans takes a bite and is amazed by its majestic taste. During the meal, Hans can feel the flavors and smells of the veggies and eggs reasonably blend together, creating a mouth-watering soup. He even imagines this dish to be served to the northern gods. Although the guards have eaten a lot, their dinner only costs one silver coin. On the way home, Nikolaus especially tells Hans not to let their commander know about this pub. The Izakaya Nabu is just a regular pub in Japan. But there's one thing special about it. Its front door opens to a parallel universe. After today's training session, Hans' commander, Berthold, wants to have a night out with him. So Hans has to take him to the Izakaya Nabu. When the two have set in place, Hans orders two craft beers and a dish of boiled edamame. Just like Hans earlier, this is the first time Berthold has tasted draft beer. He's so into the beer that he quickly finishes his big glass in just one attempt. Hans tells his commander to eat boiled beans while drinking, which to him is the best way to enjoy the beer. But Berthold isn't easily pleased by such a snack. He would like Teishu to impress him with a chicken dish. Teishu agrees and tells him to wait for a bit. While they're waiting, Shinobu brings them a dish of whole pickled cucumbers. Berthold picks up one slice and puts it in his mouth. The cucumber is so good that he doesn't even realize it when he's finished the dish. In the meantime, Teishu asks Shinobu to buy some vinegar. As she goes out by the front door, Berthold and Hans are surprised by a part of the Japanese walk of life shown from the other side. Back to Teishu and his special order. He deep fries some chicken nuggets and then takes them out. After a few seconds, he puts the nuggets into the hot oil pan so that the chicken can be more crispy. Berthold doesn't get why the chef did that and complains about his tedious work. But the final result really surprises the grumpy commander. Berthold bites one nugget, and it quickly feels like heaven to him when the sweet juice leaks after he experiences the crispy crust. At this point, he has to admit that this is the best chicken dish he's had so far. Hans tells him that the dish will be tastier if they drop some lemon juice on the chicken. But Berthold has no more chicken nuggets left on his plate. As Berthold regrets not having a chance to try the lemon with chicken, Teishu is making a chicken mayonnaise dish which causes Berthold to mouth water. But that dish is Shinobu's dinner, not for him. He asks Teishu to make him the same dish, but the pub is out of chicken. Berthold can just scream in agony. The next morning, knowing that Hans had let Berthold know about the Izakaya Nabu, Nikolaus is worried that Berthold will be upset with them. But what really happens is that their commander, after greeting them, tells them to self-practice while he rushes to Izakaya Nabu to order a dish of chicken that he missed yesterday. That evening, Hans and Nikolaus are on the way home from work when they see a nobleman named Johan go to Izakaya Nabu with his niece, Hildegard. In the bar, Shinobu gives the two guests wet wipes to clean their hands before ordering. This leaves Johan with a good first impression of this place's owner's professional service. In contrast to Johan's elegance, his niece doesn't seem to be as nice. The little cranky Hildegard would like to eat something not salty, not sour, not spicy, not bitter, not smelly, not bread, not tubers, and not eggs, but it must be super tasty. She seems to be unreasonable. But Shinobu just simply smiles and takes her order. Johan can't hide his surprise at the waitress's response. He and his niece went to almost every renowned restaurant in this city, but none of their best chefs managed to make such a tricky dish. A little bit about the guest's background, Hildegard's father was Johan's brother. After the death of her father, Hildegard was sent to her uncle's mansion, where she was given the best environment for everything. But since then, Hildegard hasn't been as innocent and cheerful as she used to be. She has been more and more spoiled, and none of her nannies could tolerate her. 
Very soon, their challenging dish is served. To Johan and his little niece's surprise, the dish is in fact a hot pot. They're even more amazed to see Shinobu put tofu and veggies into the pot, as this is the first time they've seen people do this to tofu. After steaming the tofu, Shinobu places one cube in a bowl and pours a special sauce into it. This dish is called Ancake Yudafu, which includes boiled tofu with a thick sauce called Ancake. Johan takes a bite of the tofu and immediately feels like the tofu is smelting in his mouth. Hildegard also enjoys the dish very much. She has a feeling that she doesn't have to think about how she should chew or swallow the tofu. She's so blissful that the tofu meets her requirements and keeps eating it until there's nothing left in the pot. Teishu makes the guests some more delicious dishes and tells Shinobu to bring them to their table. Johan is out of joy to finally find a restaurant that fits Hildegard's taste, so he decides to take his niece to Izakaya Nabu once a week. These are Camel and Ignaz. They've just gone back after doing business in another city. Camel has the intention to stop doing this job as there appear to be many drawbacks to the working conditions. Plus he's about to marry Ignaz's sister. Ignaz is sick of Camel's excuses and tells him that such a coward like him doesn't deserve his sister. And he wants Camel to show him his determination through a night of drinking at Izakaya Nabu. When the men all set inside, Shinobu brings them two glasses of draft beer and an appetizer. The two enjoy the beer and finish it fast. But Ignaz would like to order something else, as the beer isn't strong enough for him. Then Shinobu serves another draft beer to Camel, and for Ignaz, a bottle of Raizu. Ignaz has a sip and gets a brain freeze because of the wine's superb taste. Ignaz and Camel keep eating and drinking until they're out of appetizers. All of a sudden, Ignaz challenges Camel to eat raw fish to truly show his masculine character. Camel quickly agrees with the challenge but it takes him one second to realize it's about raw fish, which to him might be poisonous to eat. Following Ignaz's order, Shinobu serves the men a dish of sashimi and soy sauce. Camel dips one slice of sashimi in the soy sauce and puts it in his mouth in front of Ignaz's shocked face. But contrary to Ignaz's thought, the sashimi is so delicious that Camel finishes the whole dish in an instant. After that, Shinobu brings them a bowl of seafood rice with salmon eggs in the center. She instructs Ignaz to mix soy sauce with a little wasabi, then add the mixture to the rice bowl for the best taste. After a few scoops, Ignaz is so pleased to experience all the rich flavors of the seafood blending together, and he continues eating the rice and sipping Raizu until there's nothing left in the bowl. As his mood is high, he informs everyone in the pub that his fellow camel will soon be his brother-in-law. The next morning, a tax collector named Jernok comes to Izakaya Nabu and orders a dish of pickled cabbage. Although he eventually eats all of the cabbage, the dish doesn't seem to please his taste. Seeing Jernot sit inside the pub, Hans and Nikolaus don't want to come in, as the tax collector doesn't leave a good impression on anyone. Jernot is known to be a fat cat who always exploits the poor for his own benefit. His aim here today is to investigate Izakaya Nabu's business so that he can generate the tax he should collect. As Jernot is looking around, he sees Shinobu making spaghetti for lunch, so he tells Shinobu to make him the same dish despite it being her lunch. In fact, spaghetti reminds Jernot of the time when he was with his mother, and she used to make him a delicious spaghetti dish every time he asked. After a while, Shinobu places a dish of spaghetti on Jernot's table, and the man is shocked to see it has a reddish color. He's never seen spaghetti that was red all over like that, but he soon figures out Shinobu has put red bell pepper, bacon, and tomato sauce in the dish. He doesn't appreciate this spaghetti much until he tries tasting some and is amazed by its sweetness and sourness mixing reasonably together. Shinobu also tells him to add some cheese powder and black pepper to arouse the flavor. Following Shinobu's instruction, Jernot sprinkles some of the spices on his spaghetti plate. After one bite, he feels like he's floating out of space. The dish's mix of flavors even lets him experience God's love. It doesn't end yet. Jernot also recalls his memory of that time he promised his mother that he'd be a good citizen when he grew up. After the meal, Jernot compliments Shinobu's cooking skills and pays her a gold coin. From that day on, the tax collector decides to become a good person to keep the promise to his beloved mother. The next day, Nikolaus takes a deacon named Edwin to Izakaya Nabu after knowing that the pub was robbed. To his surprise, they were still open as usual. Shinobu serves the two of them light-seared bonito with draft beer and Raizu. Nikolaus tries a piece and feels that it tastes fresher than ordinary raw sashimi. Edwin would like to have some salty snacks while enjoying Raizu. Nikolaus suddenly remembers that they are here to ask about the robbery, not to eat. Shinobu tells them that this morning, when she just got here, she found the front door had been unlocked. She immediately knew there was someone sneaking in to steal things. It turned out the robber was a little girl in tatters named Eva. 
Therefore, Shinobu and Teishu decided to let the girl stay at their bar and she'll wash the dishes to earn money. Seeing that the case has been solved, Nikolaus and Edwin resume their eating session. Nikolaus can't hide his surprise when Shinobu tells him that Edwin is also a regular customer at Izakaya Nabu. Seeing everyone really enjoying the pub's atmosphere, Eve is happy that she has a chance to work here. Today, Shinobu and Eva are so bored as they have no customers, so Teishu tells Shinobu to close the pub early. When she's at the door, she finds Nikolaus collapsing in front of their pub. After going inside, Nikolaus starts recalling everything. It all happened yesterday. While on his patrol, Nikolaus saw a bunch of thugs bullying a little boy. As a palace guard, he can't turn a blind eye to this and decides to stand up for the boy. However, he was not a match for those thugs, as they outnumbered him. Eventually, they were the ones to beat him up. The next morning, Nikolaus is scolded by his commander for embarrassing the whole guard squad. Berthold also asked Nikolaus to stay after the regular training session for further practice. He was asked to carry a huge bag of weapons on his back and walk around the training pitch, but Nikolaus tried to distract himself from his tiredness by thinking of the grilled pork dish at Izakaya Nabu. Seeing his subordinate's happy face, Berthold asked him to carry even more weight and do push-ups. This time, he thought of the steamed taro, which is a perfect match for Raizu. His smiling face really pissed off Berthold. The commander then hung Nikolaus upside down with the weapon bag tied to his hand. But the young guard continued to imagine himself having a steaming bowl of Odin with veggies and smiled while doing crunches. In the end, Berthold gotta let Nikolaus go because he didn't expect Nikolaus to complete the training that easily. After listening to Nikolaus's story, Teishu has made him a bowl of hot pork soup to warm him up. Nikolaus eats the veggies and meat and quickly feels the warmth spread through his body. The soup is a perfect combination of fresh taste and the smell of veggies. The dish is absolutely next level. The next day, as usual, Jernot goes to Izakaya Nabu for spaghetti and sees a couple of noblemen inside. It is really hard for him to make this decision, but Jernot has to leave the place as he doesn't want to run into those troublesome people. It turns out Brentano, Baron of the Empire, has heard of Izakaya's unique dishes. Thinking that he's tried all the delicious food in the world, he wants to come here to verify the rumor. He orders a dish called schnitzel. Teishu and Shinobu don't understand what the word means, because it's the language of this world, not Japanese. So Teishu asks Brentano to give him a little time so that he can go ask the guards what the dish actually is. Meanwhile, seeing Brentano and his underlings playing cards to kill time, Shinobu brings them a dish of salad sandwich as their appetizer. Brentano is amazed after his first bite because he's never eaten such a creamy and soft egg sandwich. Following their master, Brentano's underlings also take some bites, and the plate is completely empty in an instant. Brentano orders another dish of sandwich, but this time, he'd like to try another flavor. Shinobu's got an idea. She slices the pork and deep fries the slices with breadcrumbs. The outcome is crispy pieces of fried pork, which she'll use as the filler for the sandwich. Right in their first bite, Brentano and the others can feel an explosion in their heads as the texture and flavor of those sandwiches are so well done. After the meal, Brentano is satisfied by how Shinobu has proven to him that there are more delicacies in the world he hasn't yet tried. He puts a sack of gold coins on the table and leaves without waiting for Teishu to come back. Coincidentally, schnitzel is the deep-fried breaded pork that Shinobu has made for the nobleman. Three months ago, before the grand opening of Izakaya Nabu, Shinobu went to the Inari Shrine to pray for their well-off business. Despite being reluctant to do this, Shinobu eventually put a 10,000 yen bill in the offering box at the shrine. On the day of opening, Teishu and Shinobu were surprised when Izakaya Nabu's back door opened into an alley in Kyoto, but somehow its front door connected to a strange world they'd never been to. And that was how the story of the mysterious Izakaya Nabu, which links two parallel worlds, took place. Back to the present time. One night, when Shinobu is about to close and tidy the pub, she meets a mysterious customer. She is a beautiful woman in a red and white kimono. The woman would like to have the fried tofu dish at their Inari altar. So Teishu makes a newly fresh fried tofu for her, who will serve their customer with food on the altar. At this point, Teishu feels that it'd be a lack of taste if the woman only ate fried tofu. So he takes out a griller and puts the tofu as well as some taro on the hot coals. Both Teishu and Shinobu feel that the customer's outfit is pretty odd. It seems that she's from the feudal hierarchy, not to mention that she looks kind of familiar, just like they've met her somewhere before. Not long after, Shinobu serves the woman grilled tofu in taro. Taking a bite of crispy tofu, the woman shows extreme joy on her face. Teishu also uses some tofu to make egg pouch tofu. The woman can feel the fried tofu soaked up plenty of broth, which creates a unique taste for it. 
After having finished eating, the woman vanishes without a trace. What's left is just a 10,000 yen bill on the table where she sat. It's until now that Taishu finally remembers who she is. She must be the Inari god in disguise as a human visiting to bless their pub. A spy named Jean from the Alila kingdom came to the Izakaya pub to gather information about Ethuria. He can know the strength of a country through its salad, because any country with a salad full of vegetables and fruits will certainly have a very developed agriculture. Jean asked Shinobu for any salad the owner could make, and the first salad that Shinobu brought him was a Caesar salad with a warm egg. Jean tried breaking the egg yolk and eating it with a little salad, and he was very surprised because this dish had a rich and refreshing taste like the dishes at aristocratic banquets. However, Jean was very impressed. Glad that there was no variety in the ingredients in this salad, Shinobu continued to offer him a Japanese radish salad called Daikin Salad. When he ate it, he felt the succulence of the radish and the saltiness of the sauce. Shinobu told Jean that the sauce was made from soy milk and salmon eggs, making him extremely panicked because Ethuria was a land deep in the continent where there could be no fish, so he was sure that this country had dug canals leading directly to the sea to catch fish. Next, when Jean saw that Shinobu brought out a plate of potato salad, he immediately felt relieved because potatoes are a quite popular food. But when Shinobu sprinkled a little pepper on the salad plate, Jean was extremely shocked because pepper in this world is so expensive that only nobles can eat it. Jean believes that Ethuria is so rich that pepper can be used as a daily spice. The last dish the chef made for him was dragon fruit salad with gold leaf. However, when he heard the name dragon fruit, Jean thought that this fruit was a dragon egg, so he panicked and left Ethuria to report to his superiors that this country was strong enough to hunt dragon eggs. The three presidents of the Water Transport Guild, Meister of Ethuria, suddenly quarreled fiercely at the Izakaya restaurant. Lawrence told Teishu and Shinobu that they were the ones overseeing the canals in this city. The man in red, whose name is Gothard, is the head of the biggest water transport guild in Ethuria. The pretty girl with the disinterested look is Ileonora from the Bird Girl's Boat Song. The boy who was being scolded by Gothard was the leader of the Golden Willow Boat. His name was Reinhold. One of Reinhold's subordinates had been fishing in Gothard's territory, so Gothard asked Reinhold to compensate him by sharing his revenue. However, Reinhold wanted to give his area to Gothard to fish instead of paying compensation. Gothard immediately refused because Reinhold's area only contained dirty eels. Hearing that, Teishu and Shinobu learned that people in this world only considered eels as a cheap ingredient. Lawrence said that the eels were full of mucus and dirty, so no one wanted to eat them. Teishu said that he would cook an eel dish to let everyone here know how delicious they are. He used a nail to stabilize the eel and then used a knife to remove all its bones. Next, he dipped the eels in the sauce and grilled them over charcoal, and the aroma emanating from the grilled eels caught Lawrence and the other president's attention. Keishu told Shinobu to bring grilled eel for everyone but didn't tell them what it was. They were extremely surprised to see its iridescent color, and when they tasted it, it was both soft and supple, with a rich flavor from the sauce surrounding it. However, everyone couldn't believe that the dish they were eating was grilled eel meat, and when they learned that eels could be processed into such a delicious dish, the Leonora and Gothard asked to catch them in Reinhold's area. Lawrence also changed his prejudice about eels by thinking that they were dirty and unpalatable. Today is Berthold and Hermina's wedding day. While sitting in the wedding carriage, Berthold felt as if he was the happiest man in the world. However, Berthold's house is rented, so the couple cannot move in yet. Berthold asked Hermina to work at the Izakaya restaurant so she could have a place to live during the day, and at night the couple could rent a motel to stay for a while. Berthold was wondering because he heard that during his visit to his wife's house, grilled eel had become very famous here. But to avoid having to explain too long, Teishu grilled a few eels for him. Teishu has made another yumaki plate. This eel wrapped in layers of egg is so good it'll force you to smile. When the couple tasted it, they felt the aromatic taste of eel meat wrapped in the fatty taste of eggs. Although the eel dish became famous, Teishu felt tired because eel is a very difficult dish to prepare. Moreover, customers only ordered eel dishes, which made him unable to prepare them in time. Right after that, Lawrence suddenly went to the Izakaya restaurant and ordered a bowl of grilled eel rice for lunch. Lawrence said that he had just gotten a bunch of wooden boxes from the Carpenters Guild and didn't know what to use them for. When they saw them, Shinobu and Teishu suddenly had an idea. They packed grilled rice into wooden boxes and sold it to people for lunch, so they no longer have to suffer from preparing grilled eel rice every time customers come to the restaurant. Izakaya's grilled eel rice dish has quickly become famous in Ethuria. 
Berthold was happy to see that his wife Hermina was working hard at Teishu. She even learned how to make grilled eel rice along with some other Japanese dishes. Lawrence suddenly brought over two beer glasses, including one with a beautiful pattern for the izakaya. Lawrence made these two cups himself because he is a long-time glassblower here. Lawrence said that Hans accidentally broke a glass at Izakaya and ran back crying to him, so he made two other glasses to compensate for his clumsy son. Lawrence suddenly saw Bjorn, the owner of a famous beer bar in the city. Lawrence had often gone to that pub before, so he invited Bjorn to drink with him. However, Lawrence was very surprised to learn that Bjorn was about to close his pub because he was too old, so he wanted to spend more time with his children and grandchildren. Just then, Bjorn asked Teishu to make him something special to celebrate. So Teishu breaded and fried a few shrimp with vegetables to make a plate of tempura. As soon as they smelled the fragrant aroma, Bjorn's friends also came to see what it was. Just taking a bite of tempura with soy sauce, Bjorn already felt the crunchy texture of this dish. When he tried a piece of fried vegetable with matcha powder, he noticed the scent of herbs. Teishu brought out the clear broth of pike conger for Bjorn. He separated the fish bones and put them in boiling water to make them shrink like a flower. Bjorn ate that bowl of soup and said that luckily, when his restaurant closed, there was still Izakaya restaurant as a gathering place for people. Bjorn hugged his friends for coming to support his pub all this time. Lawrence asked Teishu to leave the patterned beer mug as Bjorn's personal mug every time he came here. John was very moved and raised his glass to thank Lawrence. A blonde woman working as a mercenary suddenly appeared in Izakaya, causing everyone to pay attention. Shinobu brought her a beer along with stewed egg cockles as an appetizer. But this stewed egg cockles is prepared in a very special way, making it taste exactly like chicken. The mercenary girl named Leontine was surprised by the scent of the restaurant's seafood soup, so she asked Hermina to get her a bowl of soup to try. When observing Hermina and Shinobu, Leontine felt a little jealous of them. If she hadn't been a mercenary, she would have been married and had a peaceful family by now. Right after that, Hermina gave Leontine a plate of extremely delicious seafood soup. As soon as she tried a spoonful, Leontine remembered her childhood days in the countryside, because she came from a southern coastal city in the Oilia Kingdom. Leontine said that she actually came to Aethuria to find someone she had once encountered, and that person had single-handedly rushed into Leontine's army and defeated them all. Even Leontine was armed with weapons but still unable to defeat him. Everyone quickly realized that the person Leontine was looking for was Commander Berthold. At that moment, Berthold suddenly arrived and greeted everyone in the pub. As soon as he saw Leontine, Berthold realized that she was his former enemy, so Berthold happily invited her for a drink to chat about wartime stories. However, Hermina discovered that Leontine must have fallen in love with Berthold after being defeated by him. If Leontine knew that Berthold had gotten married, she would definitely be heartbroken. Right after that, Berthold suddenly called Hermina and introduced Leontine, saying that she was his wife. So Leontine seemed a bit sad after hearing that. But when she calmed down, Leontine raised her glass to congratulate the couple's happiness. It was raining heavily today, so not a single customer came to the restaurant. But a noble guy named Bakishoff suddenly walked in to try drinking their draft beer. After finishing his beer, Bakishoff said he would buy this restaurant. He even wanted to take Shinobu and Hermina as his concubines. It turned out that the beer the restaurant was selling was lager beer. Anyone selling this beer will be imprisoned or executed. The next day, the izakaya was closed to discuss the lager. Edwin said that the king banned the sale of lager beer because he only wanted the royal family to drink it. Shinobu asked Teishu about the difference between ale and lager. Teishu explains that ale is a beer brewed with a warm fermentation method with a fruity and full-bodied taste. Lager is beer that's processed at a lower temperature, and its clear appearance and crisp flavor are its selling points. In this world, beer is generally ale. But in Japan, it's usually lager. In the worst case, Teishu may have to sell this place to Bakishoff. Right after that, seeing that everyone was hungry, Teishu made some rice balls and sausages for them. They were very surprised when they first saw the octopus-shaped sausage. Rice balls are sandwiched between pieces of dried seaweed and filled with tuna or salmon. The next morning Halger said that the whole city held a meeting to discuss how to deal with this restaurant. All three leaders of the water transport guilds tried to defend them. However, Bakishoff still requested a comprehensive inspection at the Izakaya restaurant. The person who presided over the inspection was tax collector Jernot. A few days later, Bakishoff and Jernot went to the Izakaya restaurant to investigate the lager beer incident. To make everything as clear as possible, Jernot will start by checking the origin of the goods. Through a beer production company, Jernot learned that there were more than 37 barrels of lager beer being sold on the market. 
But actually the 36 barrels were sold to the Oilia Kingdom, not this restaurant. Jernot said that with just one barrel of lager beer at Aethuria, it is clearly not enough for the Izakaya restaurant to do business. He discovered that the lager beer was actually delivered to Bakishoff's house. After hearing that, Bakishoff and his three subordinates were extremely scared. His subordinate was about to run away when he was caught by Hans and Nikolaus. It turned out that Jernot already knew Bakishoff's crime, so he joined forces with the guards to lure him inside. Finally, the sale of lager beer at Izakaya has ended. That night, everyone gathered at the Izakaya to celebrate because they had successfully passed. But they also have to admit that the person with the greatest contribution in this case is Jernot. Teishu said that he would entertain everyone today, so everyone happily drank all night long. However, Izakaya still has to stop selling lager beer because it is a banned item anyway. When the restaurant was deserted with no customers, Johan suddenly brought his grandfather here to eat. The restaurant's appetizer today is mackerel fried and soaked in sweet and sour fish sauce. Just after eating a bite, Johan's grandfather did not feel hot like normal fried food because the sour taste reduced the heat of the dish. Right after that, Johan's grandfather suddenly wanted to drink beer, making Teishu and Shinobu very confused because their beer, lager, is not allowed to be sold in this country. But because Johan's grandfather really wanted to try it, they had to accept and bring out two cups. After drinking a cup, Johan's grandfather said that this beer is not the same as the royal lager beer because the royal lager beer has a more comprehensive taste while the beer here has an extremely clear aftertaste. Eva was bringing a flounder steamed in soy sauce to them when she accidentally tripped and fell. But Johan's grandfather did not scold her but kindly gave her a rag to wipe the dirt off her face. Right after that, Teishu brought out another even bigger steamed flounder with soy sauce, making Johan and his nephew very surprised. Johan's grandfather had never eaten a succulent fish with such a rich flavor. Johan's grandfather said that when he was young, he used to love eating deep-fried salmon skin, so Teishu made some deep-fried salmon skin for him. It turns out that Johan's grandfather was the emperor of this country. After eating at Izakaya, he decided to allow people to freely sell lager beer. The next day, Jernot came to inform Teishu that from now on, lager beer would be freely bought and sold, so now they wouldn't be fined even if they sold lager beer. Their restaurant continues to open normally to serve everyone in this city. While everyone was eating and drinking, Count Brentano suddenly sent someone to bring dozens of barrels of ale to give to them. Jernot said that Brentano was the one who helped him capture Bakishoff. Right after that, Brentano had his subordinates pour out a few barrels of his ale for everyone to enjoy. So that night, many people gathered at the Izakaya to enjoy his premium ale. As soon as the party ended, Shinobu and Teishu sat down and talked about the happy and sad stories since they opened this restaurant. They feel very lucky to be able to run a pub business in this world. 